Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'd like to talk about testosterone for men. So there was a great study just recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine called the Traverse Study that I'd like to tell y'all a little bit about. You know, for years and years, we've been seeing an explosion of testosterone for the treatment of men for all sorts of things, that it makes all sorts of claims. But physicians were overall a little bit hesitant because of a possible connection between heart attacks and strokes. And so this Traverse study was instituted to try to see if, if there really was a connection between using testosterone and heart attacks and strokes in men. So this study used the gold standard, which was a double blind placebo control study, and they enrolled over 5,000 men between the ages of 45 and 80. And they specifically chose men that were higher risk for cardiovascular disease. And in fact, over 50% of them had known cardiovascular disease. Probably they'd either had a heart attack or they had stents placed in their heart. And I really applaud the study um, for choosing men that were already really high risk. Half of the men were placed on a placebo gel and half of them used 1.62% testosterone gel. And the men were chosen when they had known low testosterone. So they needed to have two separate blood tests between the hours of 5 a.m. and 11 a.m. with a testosterone level less than 300. So it had to be documented that these men had a low testosterone level. So they were placed on the testosterone or the placebo and after a period of time, they found that of the men using testosterone, 7% of them had some sort of cardiovascular event, like a heart attack or a stroke. Whereas the placebo group, 7.3% of those men had a heart attack or stroke. So that showed that there wasn't an elevated risk of heart attack or stroke in patients using the testosterone gel. This is such great news. It really has been a relief for doctors like myself who prescribe testosterone for men. But I do want to go into other issues and things that should be being done for any man that is on testosterone. So I wanna really note that this study was specifically for testosterone gel. And I'm actually in the future gonna strongly encourage men to use testosterone gel based on this study. There are also patches and injections, but we don't really know if those have the same results or not. I mean, I would hope so, but we're, we just can't be sure without another study. Also, you know, before I start men on testosterone, I really want documented proof that their testosterone truly is low. So I do two separate blood tests in the morning to show that the testosterone is low. If the testosterone is not low, I, I don't start men on testosterone. And then also men need to realize that every three to two to three months or so after initially starting testosterone or when changing the dose, a level needs to be checked. No one thinks it's safe to have a really extremely high testosterone level, and that's just not a good idea. In the study, they, they were sure to titrate the testosterone level to 350 to 750, so that's important. You know, they didn't, they didn't just give a ton of testosterone and let the levels get really high. They really made sure that the testosterone level remained within a certain boundary. And I also encourage my patients using testosterone to come in every two to three months when we're titrating the dose, and then they should come in at least every six to 12 months to make sure that the level they're on is a good level. And also testosterone can increase prostate volume. So a PSA should be checked initially, and then it should be checked every six to 12 months. And men that have had prostate cancer, for the most part, should not be using testosterone unless they specifically speak to their urologist about it. Also, one other side effect of testosterone is it can increase your blood count. So a CBC really should be done initially, you know, that first two to three months, and then every six to 12 months after that as well, because if the blood continues to increase, the level increases, that can cause the blood to get too thick and can in increase your risk for um, strokes and blood clots. And even though the Traverse study didn't show an elevated risk of heart attacks and strokes, they did show that men that were taking testosterone had a higher risk of developing atrial fibrillation, blood clots, and had a higher risk of kidney injury. So at the end of the day, I'm not opposed 
to men using testosterone, but I really usually sit down with them and say, look, this is something that needs to be monitored. It's, it's a controlled substance. And I really ask for some of the goals that they have. So are they hoping that it'll increase their mood? Are they hoping that it'll increase their sex drive? Are they hoping that it'll increase their quality of, of erection? And if those things are not being met after three to six months of using testosterone, I usually tell the men to stop. So it's real important to set goals and talk about what the goals of therapy are gonna be and then circle back because it's just not worth this elevated risk and the need to be on something that needs to be monitored if it's not helping. I hope this helps. Thanks for joining me.